So I'm going to call the finance committee meeting for February 15th, uh, 2023 at 535 p.m. The first item on the agenda is to review. Oh, um, Tim, Trevor just walked in the door. Do you want to go ahead and call your meeting to order? Oh, no, we weren't. I don't think we were yeah, you're posted. You're posted. Yep. Oh, yeah. yep. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I'm yeah. Like, so. <laughs> a bunch, a bunch of meetings. Talking. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll call the meeting. But, I'll call the select board meeting to order. Huh? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Tim. Um, first <laughs> item on the agenda is to review the um, minutes. Jim. Uh, I think we should state which meeting we're approving the minutes for. Oh, for the meeting of February 7th. Oh, second the motion. Any discussion? Um, there, there's a typo committee has, that one of the committees only has one of you. But, um, you know what i'm gonna just swallow that one okay i don't think we need to issue a corrected okay <laughs> um any other discussion nicely capture nice job capturing all of the four billion comments about the financial indicators okay um we don't have anyone online from finance committee, so we can just vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. All right, that's unanimous. Thank you. Um, there's, wait, Trevor's gone already. Okay. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the um, treasurer budgets. So we're ready to go through those. Okay. Well, we're going to skip over the treasurer collector salaries tonight. Um, we're trying to work a couple things out. I'll explain that at some point. Um, but we'll start with the treasurer collector expense, and that's 145 5410. Okay. It's with us. 145-5410. I can't wait out my budget. Oh, you, you did. Oh, um, shoot. Okay. You okay to share there? Yeah. Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion? I move that we uh, recommend the uh, uh, Sum of uh, thirty-one thousand five hundred and forty for treasurer collector expenses. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? Those are all me. Yes. Yep. So I, I don't know that there's a whole lot to note here. Um, Sarah went through in detail and looked at some of the expenditures. Like, for instance, our payroll services have gone up. Um, postage. But postage. Postage has gone, gone up. There's some things that you decreased. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to trying to get a better feel for the expenditures that are in this department going forward. Are we on, <laughs> which one are we on? We're on 5440. 5410. 145-5410. Okay, so that's not all breaking down. It just says general, and but you went through. What yeah, she, she has a detail sheet. If we wanted Thank to you. see it, I could print it out for everybody, but I'm not sure it's important. Went down. <laughs> what went down? Oh, that's because it's the went, went down by the actual issues. I have a question though. Right. The monthly financial mm -hmm. for, through uh, February 1st has original budget of 40710 was the difference of 3,000? Right. right, so the treasurer um, collector can in fact add money to the tax recap for tax title collection. 
And Barbara had been doing that for years. And so um, Sarah and I chose to do that, continue that practice. So we've added $3,000 through the tax recap to pay for tax title processes. Okay. Would that be true with this year's budget as well? That's for fiscal 23. And so for fiscal 24, that decision hasn't been made, but I'm guessing we would probably do that again, depending on what we come up with. So can you explain that a little more? What's the tax recap and where's the funding coming so, from? So the tax rate, it's, it's in the tax rate setting process. The treasurer collector has a specific page where they can add money to the budget to pay for additional tax title costs. But just that one item? What's that? The, the law just includes that one just item? Just that one item. And that's for the process of collecting the tax. Correct. Like the expenses involved in. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So Barbara over the years had budgeted lower in her regular appropriations budget and then budget additional uh, when we did the tax rate setting. Um, it's been higher before, but we thought 3000 should cover it. We went through the whole history of what we spent over the last few years and felt like that was appropriate. Okay. I'm sorry. I hope this is not way off topic. When you're talking about tax title expenses, are you talking about um, taking threatening to take title to people's houses to collect taxes? Right. Right. Correct. Putting liens on their property, legal fees with our okay. tax title attorney, okay. filing at the registry. Right. When was the last time the town of Deerfield sold somebody's property to take title to pay tax? We've never yeah. done it in the time that I've been here. And, and that's something that Sarah has brought up. Uh, we have some land of low value that um, we've we've contacted, she's contacted a, uh, a lawyer, our lawyer on that to see what we do now, because you know, I don't know if you want to explain it, but. Sure, so Barbara started the process a little over two years ago um, to foreclose on um, some land of low values, um, but we're past that two year deadline. Uh, when I was starting to learn about this budget process, I found some notes about that. And so I reached out to our lawyer saying, looks like we're past the deadline. What do we do now? So now she's starting to get back to me. So uh, we have never done yeah. anything since I've been working here. So um, we That's just good. do tax titles. Yeah. Thank you. And we sure. do just have to remember to speak into the mics so that the people online can hear us. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, 145, um, okay, so it has been moved and seconded for one forty five fifty four ten at thirty one thousand five hundred forty dollars. Any other discussion? And that's already in your book, Beth. Yep, that one is. And I think I think all of Sarah's budgets are in there. The ones I've added were select board ones. And okay, oh, yeah. yep, okay. that'll help you. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Opposed? Abstaining. All right. Four zero one. By the way, everybody knows Sarah, right? Say again? Yeah. There isn't anybody here that doesn't know Sarah. Okay. I would like to make sure I have the spelling of your name correct. Sure. S-A-R-A-H. Last name is Kimball. K-I-M-B-A-L-L. Okay. So I think we'll move on to the uh, veterans benefits. Number three. That is 543. It's in tab five. 543-5410. By the way, congratulations on a new job. Thank you. But <laughs> we should probably be congratulating ourselves that we got. Thank you. That's very kind. Yes. Okay, we have a motion. <laughs> Make a motion to approve veterans benefits account five four three fifty four ten for twenty one thousand dollars. We have a second. A second. Oh. Uh, any, would you like to discuss? You know, we, we didn't really make any changes here because um, though we haven't spent that full 21,000 in fiscal 22, fiscal 23 has some um, cost of living adjustments to it. Sarah went through the figures and thought that uh, the 21,000 would, would more than cover it 
but no no reason to increase it from there. Yeah. Could I ask exactly what, what this is? Um, so I'm not positive of how um, these residents get on this list, but we do have a couple um, veterans in town. I think they go through the um, veterans service in Greenfield, the upper Pioneer Valley, Pioneer Valley uh, service that we have that we're a part of. Um, and uh, we get this benefit that we then issue um, checks to um these couple of veterans here in town and we get reimbursed 75 percent through the cherry through sheets the, yeah yeah Wait, <clears throat> is it do they have to have a certain income limit or i'm not sure how they get on this list I, i'm not sure yeah the veterans district just sends her a bill every month that says you pay this guy this much you pay this guy this much period you know and, and so she does Right. Yes. I mean, really, that's what yes. it boils down to. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There is also my a vacancy on the uh, for representation in the town of Deerfield for the Upper Pioneer Valley. Just to drop it out there so that people know if anyone wants us to speak represent. into the microphone. Oh. If anyone wants to represent the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans uh, Administration, we have a vacancy. Uh, so we've had great, great people to serve in the past, but just have retired from that and. Need need some people to so out. no town representation from Correct. Deerfield so we need that yep we do who should we contact and anybody can serve you don't you don't no need no to be no veteran. should we contact if we're interested in serving oh uh, you uh, you can get a hold of us right here we'll we'll Just, make sure yep okay. right here to the to the um Casey Warren you could let it's let us know only, in our one office I know up there is Laura Thorne but I yep. I, I don't we I don't can know. get you the contacts yeah. there for sure. They're a great group to work with. And it's an appointment through the select board. So if you want more information, they do have a website. I can send you that link. Um, they do look for people to participate. Um, it's not very many meetings per year, right. but it might be useful if you look through the website. The Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District, it's a district, is run through Greenfield. Thanks, Casey. <laughs> Any other discussion on this item? There's not much control over it. They tell us how much yeah. to pay and we pay it. So, um, yeah, and this this will cover the two people we currently have on there. If there was anybody that was added um, during the year, then then we'd have to ask for a reserve fund transfer. But mm -hmm. right now, we just know of two people. No, okay. There's got to be more than two Armed Forces veterans in Deerfield receive mm -hmm. benefits, right? It has to. It has to be based on their need. Okay, that's, I, that's at least that's the that way I understand it. Is this yeah. like Civil War veterans or something? It's a. It's a separate. I think it's a separate separate benefit that they they apply for. So I think there is more people that could. I would imagine, but there's a lot more than two vets. In town. That's yes, there is. Thank sure. goodness. Sure. Yep. Did you sit in the tape? <laughs> At least. Um, any further discussion? No. So it's been moved and seconded by four three fifty four ten for twenty one thousand dollars. All those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Mm -hmm. Five zero zero. Next. Okay. We're going to skip the debt budgets. Um, I did plug something in. Uh, Sarah and I looked at some things. We discussed some some of our debt with our uh, financial advisor, but we're not going to go over those today because I think a lot of that will change between now and the time that we actually set the budget. So we're going to go right to uh, the 900s. And we're going to... <clears throat> Start with 911 5400, which is the Franklin County Regional Retirement. It's a lot of money. Do we have a motion? 911 5400. I move that meeting. Discussing that 911 5400, the Franklin City Regional Retirement. Okay, we have a second. A second. All right. Discussion? 
Um, well, you know, this is set by our retirement system. There isn't a whole lot to talk about. It does end up being this year, 23.66% of a five-year average of salaries that are included in this. Um, so that's your top number. And then deducted from that are the amounts that are going to get charged directly to um, EMS, to the senior center, and to the wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> So what was the 23% number you mentioned? That's how this number is determined? Well, it, if you look at their sheet, they, they tell you what the five-year average of salaries is, and then they tell you how much you owe. I just, it's right. 20, it ends up being 23.66% for the town of Deerfield. Of the five-year average of the salaries paid to folks in the system. Correct. Any questions or discussion? So it's a 2.7 percent increase, which seems. And do we have a choice? Not really. Nope. No. None. It'd be interesting what would happen if we said no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we want to say no. <laughs> Make it fun. <laughs> uh, all right, we're punchy already. We just started. Um, any further discussion? No, so it's been moved and seconded for 9 11 5400 at $640,352. Any further discussion? No, all those in favor? Aye. That passes unanimously, 500. Okay, you can go right to the next page, which is workers' comp 912 5400. We have a motion. Make a motion to approve workers' compensation account 912-5400 for $48,901. We have a second. Second. Discussion? Okay. So this one. This one's a little harder to estimate. Um, it's, it's always really tough because we don't know what kind of credits they're gonna give us. How much are they gonna give us in credits? Um, Sarah has gone through the process of figuring our, our calendar year 2022 um, payroll, less the overtime, and then increase that by 5.5%, just as, you know, because, um, the salaries are going up a COLA of 3% and the step increase is 2.5. So that's 5.5. And then she applies that by the workers comp rate that was on our last bill, comes up with a number. Then we start deducting stuff off of the top saying, okay, well, you know, they've given us more than 20% in the past. What are they gonna give us for credit? We figured, okay, they're gonna give us a 20% credit. We, we don't know. So, um, it's it's really a, a shot in the dark. It might be high, and then again, it might not, depending on on what happens when they do our audit from the previous year. So, I I know it seems like a big increase, but that's how the numbers came out. So it's partly we have more people, and we're paying people more, and so it's just. We're paying more in salaries, therefore. And I, I wonder, um, I don't know, Sarah, did you notice uh, the rates are going up too? So for instance, um, a couple went up and a couple went down. Yeah, the workers' comp rate for the highway department was at 0 0.0382, and now it's at 0 0.0415. So that's gone up. Um, the rate for EMS has gone up, not much, but it's gone up a little bit. Um, the rate for the wastewater treatment plant went down, you know, so, so there, there are some adjustments. The school went up. Um, and that's a lot of people. What's that? And that's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it is. I, I was, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was curious about, I mean, it seems like in a way this is rebounding from a decline. What was causing the decline? Don't, I don't know. Um, I do think that we over budgeted. First of all, 
Um, we used to have another company that we went with for our insurance mm -hmm. and for workers comp, and they were they were notoriously high. So when we started budgeting for the for the Maya, we didn't know what to budget. And so we budgeted too high. And then we just over the years, we've just kept bringing it down. You can see <laughs> And we added at 52,000, we added at 55,000, 55, then 50,000, then 47,000 for what we budgeted. Then last year was low. And I wondered if we were going to make it through the year without having to pay extra, but I don't think we're going to. I think we'll be just fine. But that was because they gave us a 30 some percent discount. But what are they giving us the discount? We don't know what they're basing the discounts on. Aren't those the discounts for the, aren't those the, discounts for the classes we take at MMA? No, that's a they give you discount. actually a credit for that. So that's different. Okay. Um, at least I, as far as I know, but they, they have all these line items where they just deduct these total dollar amounts and we don't know what it's, what it's, what it's, um, what makes it up. Why, why are they doing it? We don't know. So and so in Kevin's, yeah. Kevin's work that he does with the safety and OSHA stuff too, wouldn't that be? I don't um, know. Just stab it at the dark. It or is. Related to claims made. It could be, yes. Oh, I'm sure that has something to do with it. It's, I mean, we have a uh, a rating based on how few claims we've had. And so I know we get a deduction for that, but how do they how do they figure that deduction? We we don't know. And I we didn't feel comfortable projecting a large deduction. So we went with something in between. <laughs> it does sound reasonable. I have a couple. Go ahead. Yeah. Two questions. Um, you have a carry forward of approximately forty three thousand dollars. That that is a carry forward from the nineties. Um, there was a policeman or a highway guy, Trevor. Do you remember or Sarah? Do you know the one that so, got sucked through the tube? Somebody somebody was injured, and we agreed to keep that money aside for him in case he ever needed it until he died. So that money continues to carry forward from year to year to year. Oh, so it that, never gets used. So it's not being spent this year. Either, no, right. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, my other question is the scams. You said the rates went down. Uh, I no, no. The scams rate actually went up a little bit, but not as much as the highway rate went up. Why the uh, as a percentage of the total seventy seven thousand nine twenty one skims dropped. I I can't tell you why, Sarah. Do you know? If their rates went up, if their rates went up, I would so think it'd be just as high, if not higher. Hmm. Unless their payroll's down. Did they, they redid their number of people, so right? Last year, it was no. 20s, but it was higher on the spreadsheet. That's right. You pointed that out to me earlier, and I forgot about that. So according to the spreadsheet that we do that Barbara had set up, um, their figure last year was actually 20,000, 559. Um, Oh, so it's wrong list. Why we deducted 25, I don't know. So last year was incorrect. Yes. Good catch. Any other questions on this one? This one is... No. She had a higher there. Just... So, so it's like been numbers. moved and seconded for 9125400 workers comp at $48,901. Any other questions? No. All those in favor? That's unanimous 500. Yeah. Next. Um, the next page is unemployment insurance 913-5400. We have a motion. Move that we um, discuss the unemployment insurance nine one three fifty four hundred at 
$22,000. Second. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. So um, we figured with uh, COVID being a non thing this year and people hopefully uh, businesses getting smarter about the unemployment fraud um, that it would decrease. And it just really, that's it was just a number we we thought was reasonable. Really no, no specific basis for it. So this is an estimate if we have to pay unemployment for somebody who ends up unemployed this year. Right. Yeah, you'll see we went over in 2022, we were at 27,675, but um, the school had a couple of employees that were on that. And I know what the town had had one that was on it. Um, I don't remember where we're at for 2023 so far, but I don't think we have much for costs. It's, it's, it is, it's, that's a hard one to estimate. So okay. go ahead, John. There's an amendment on the financials. Increasing last year's budget of twenty-seven thousand increases by twenty thousand. Bring it up to forty-seven thousand. Um, Shouldn't we? I don't know what that is, but I, don't we need to consider it for? Actually, that was a that was a transfer, so transfers aren't included in this. So it was a transfer because we were short. Yeah, but if we're yeah. going to be short last year, either, you... either that or. I'm remembering from fiscal 21, we had a carry forward because um, we didn't get all the billing from the state because they were so backed up from the from the fraud that we didn't get anything until August. That's that's my recollection. That's why in fiscal 21, you have a fifty three thousand dollar expenditure. I don't know, without actually looking at the looking at the count, I can't tell you for sure. <clears throat> My concern is we're under budgeting. What's that? My concern is that we are under budgeting. If we well, look at look at what we've spent so far this year. Um, it's been minimal, right? Twenty two. Twenty two hundred. Twenty two thousand. This year? Yeah. I think that was with nineteen thousand. Oh, that's what happened. Yes, you're right. So. I should have included that because that was a town meeting vote on the on the fiscal 22 because or fiscal 23 because um, we had that insure uh, interest and late fees that had oh, collected that, that from oh, great, great. that was past yeah. charges Thousands? that was past yeah. charges yeah. yeah thank you cleaned I cleaned all that up that's right oh, so though good that goes back. Earlier years, you much much earlier. Oh, years. way earlier. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but they just kept adding on to it over these years, and we knew that they weren't gonna weren't gonna make it go away. That's so right. we Good figured catch. if we paid it off, then we could start fresh and and move forward. This yep. is something we should have done years ago, but but it just didn't get done. So, is that included under one of the past year's budgets, or is that just? It should have been included warrant. as a warrant article on fiscal twenty three. Yep. Yeah. And I will add that. So we can go ahead and vote to recommend the amount, the twenty-two thousand in here, for this year. But um, are you like, are you planning to give us a new sheet next week or whenever? I certainly the, can if you'd like a new sheet. Yeah, yes, to make the. Vote. I think we should. Okay. Um, good. Should we still vote? I think we can still vote because we're voting the amount. We're recommending yeah. twenty-two thousand for this line item. Yeah, it's not going to um, change. FY24 numbers. Yeah. Any other questions or discussion? Just so I'm keeping up. Things are, so we're talking about going back and doing, redoing the 2022 numbers on this sheet. The 2023 number. Sorry. This we, yeah, yeah, we voted that in October. Okay. Are you guys comfortable with voting this or do we want to wait until we have that's the sheet? Not the well, no, it's no. just for budget. Not right. at all. Correct. Right, yeah. It's not going to change the one year. I mean, this is all just data for yeah us. comparison. Yeah, right. comparison. It doesn't affect what we're doing. Yeah. 
Okay. You guys Next ready? year, as soon as I would have added the actuals, I would have realized what I missed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other discussion or questions? Nope. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded for 913 unemployment insurance at 22000 Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous 500. Okay, the next one is 914-5400, and that is for group insurance for the town. Uh, ouch. <laughs> yep, yeah. So move to recommend. Yeah. Okay. I, think I move to recommend group recommend insurance that. for the town. <laughs> Um, 914-5400 at $338,070. We have a second. I'll second it. All right. Discussion. So our health insurance rates haven't gone up in probably three to five years. This coming year, all plans, all HMO and PPO, PPO plans are going up 6%. Um, across the board. So all coverages um, that we offer to active employees are going up 6%. Um, I've taken the our most recent bill for February 2023, and I've multiplied that by 12 um, to get a good idea because it includes um, the MedEx rates also went up for this calendar year. Uh, we've also included um, a 5% buffer um, for new hires. Uh, we have about four expected uh, new hires to be coming in the new year. Um, so in case they enroll. Um, that's about it. Um, and do we have, we have more people this year than we did last year, right? Even without those new hires? The town does, yes. The school does, uh, not. does not. They went okay. down. And they went down, good. Yeah. Right. Any questions or discussion? Yep. Uh, so uh, the senior center, there's no credit for them? Right. Because- so. <laughs> that was a judgment call. They're going to claim it on their budget just in case. But okay. right now, there is not anyone in their department that takes insurance or is intending to take insurance. So okay. we thought we would not include that as a credit off of this. Anybody else? Nope. All right. So it's been moved and seconded for 914-5400 group insurance town at $338,070. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. That's unanimous. 500. All Next. right. Next one is the school, 914-5410. Do we have a motion? I move that we recommend the sum of 652739 for school group insurance. We have a second. Account number 914-5410. Second. All right. <clears throat> Discussion? So same thing. It's pretty similar. Rates are going up 6%. Uh, we included a 3% buffer for any new hires. Um, and so that was about 20,000 um, for new employees. And so the total only went up 2.73%. So that's where we're seeing the fewer people. Correct, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Nope. All right. Uh, it's been moved and seconded 914-5410 group insurance school at 652,739. Yes. Um, all those in favor? Uh, it's unanimous 500. Okay. 
Next. All right, this is the last one for Sarah. I'm oh, sorry, can I just I'm sorry. Yes. Go backwards just for one sure. quick thing. So do, do we know that those school numbers are somewhat permanent? In other words, have they submitted some kind of pre-budget and analysis to you about their numbers? No, we don't. Know. So we're just basing it on the fact that in the last year there have been less people in the systems of that. Right. Correct. Okay. So Casey, Casey, did, we don't know if they're permanent reductions. We don't know that, although um, okay. that's why we have that three percent buffer just in case any okay. new hires come on and they do enroll. Okay, and that's three percent. Oh, that? sorry, that's three percent of their total. Um, so it's about twenty thousand that we added into this number one. in case they had additional people that yeah. took insurance. Do you know what that would? Roughly in your calculations, that's assuming like two people, three people, four. It, it depends if it's totally, a single, totally enough, if it's right? a family, that's probably almost one. Right. Um, but right. if it's a, an employee and a spouse, that'd be about half. Right. So okay. it's that's, only for a couple employees. Yeah. So that's a fluid number in some sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Okay, great. Ready to move forward? We're ready for the next one. Yep. Um, so Medicare insurance, it's 916-5400. Ouch. Yeah. Do you want to speak to that one? Oh, no. I, yeah. I move to yeah. okay. approve Medicare insurance, 916-5400 at 1100. Yeah. Oh, one hundred eleven thousand uh, dollars, or no, sorry, one hundred eleven. I don't know why I'm having such a problem here. And one hundred fifty nine dollars. Yes, too many ones. <laughs> so many ones. Too many ones. Yeah. Like... We have a second. second. All right. Now we're right. It's discussed. Okay. So to come up with these figures, um, I took the calendar year uh, total for twenty two. Um, and then, like Brenda said earlier, we're expected a five and a half percent increase for pay. We decided to do six percent um, increase um, to cover um, any new hires, new contracts that'll be happening. Um, and then we uh, multiply that by the one point four five percent for Medicare. Um, and then that comes out to our um, total for one eleven one fifty nine. Um, we're, it, it, it is higher, but, um, in 23, we're, we're expecting that we might go over. We think 23 might be a little low, um, by just taking what we paid out in calendar year 22, um, we were at 106,000 and we're at 103 for, uh, the budget for last year or this year. So, um, I think last year we might've budgeted a little low. Right. We are expecting to ask for a reserve fund transfer for this. For 23. Correct. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Couldn't we just take the budgeted wages and multiply that by 1.45%? But we don't know what the budgeted wages are for the school. Yeah. Makes, makes it a little we don't know. Or yeah. how many new hires right. or in, any new employees. Yeah, but still, it's still you have a budget of wages in here that we will have. Right. Well, this is That's just an easier calculation. I, okay. That would be kind of a lengthy process. I'm not sure it'd be worth it. Okay. Fair enough. Any other discussion? Yeah, so it's been moved and seconded for 916-5400 Medicare insurance at $111,159. Um, any last minute discussion? No. All those in favor? Uh, that's unanimous 500. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank so, you. All right, good job. Do we know when we want to look at debt? Um, or we'll just wait. Do, do, I mean, we can look at. No, no, no. I don't want to look at it now. I'm just oh, asking, like, schedule wise, looking when? forward. When do you want to? I would, I would say 
the end of March, we might have a okay. better idea. We're we're trying um, at this point in time. We're trying to get a certificate of substantial completion on the wastewater treatment plan. Did I mention that last yeah, week? Okay, so you know what what we're trying to do. Um, so until we know what we're doing with USDA, it'd be really hard to budget anything. Right, we did plug some things in, but just just to have some numbers in there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Have a great night. Don't lock the door. <laughs> All right. So next on the agenda is revenue projection. You can put the books away. Close the book. Which you gave us last week, right? I did give it to you last week, but if you need another copy, I did make some extras. You've got yours. Uh, it's this guy. Yeah. Uh, um, this back. I was going to put it in tab 11 if I was putting it in the bill. Oh, I'm going to put it in. You just told me to do that today. Yep. Anybody Thanks. else? Okay. It's the same one that was as of 2 7. Right. The, the version hasn't changed since the last meeting, has it? What's that? The version of this. Has no, I, I didn't. I was going to, but then I decided it wasn't worth it uh, because right. things will change between now and the time we're done with this anyway. Since we don't have any any numbers from the state for state aid. You got the new stuff that is out there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you want to take us through it? Sure. What we have right now, anyway. Um, tonight I handed out a tax levy sheet. Mm -hmm. Do you have that handy? Because I think we should start there. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a obviously a pretty rough projection, but the levy limit. Uh, the top line of that is that's set. That that's from last year. That's that's the um, oh sorry. This is fiscal twenty three. It should be fiscal twenty four. Is that a type? Yeah, I was gonna. What's that? Which that should be FY twenty twenty four. Correct. Yeah. I was wondering. About yep. I just saw that. Um, then you add your two and a half percent. That's uh, a given. And then new growth. Um, We've had two really great years of new growth. I have no idea what it's going to be for fiscal 24. And I know that was a question you were thinking you would ask the assessors, the assessors. when they came on the yeah. 28th. So if you would, that'd be great. Um, I plugged something in to have it. I think I'd almost rather be a little high than a little low, but um, uh, but I think it's a pretty reasonable number based on on uh, what little I do know. So that gives you your total levy levy limit, and then you add the debt exclusion. And here again, these are just numbers that I plugged in, thinking, well, this might be what our what our debt is going to be for fiscal twenty four. But I'm sure it could change a lot between now and and the time we're done. So that brings you to the maximum allowable levy, which is the top number on your revenue detail sheet. Anybody have any questions with that? Great. Okay. All right, so, so that would be the tax levy on the top line and then the next section is just your state uh, uh, cherry sheet numbers. I just plugged in exactly what we had last year because I don't expect that it'll go up much, but who knows? Uh, you know, we, we won't know anything until until Maura puts out her budget. Um, so for the time being, I thought it was just safer just to consider it even. That seems reasonable. Overlay. Here again, that's that's just a estimate. Um, they the assessors did plug in one hundred and seven thousand dollars last year. Um, I think that was because they were expecting some possible ATB decisions. 
that's what my recollection is from looking at the tax recap. I uh, didn't know what to do for fiscal 24, but I just plugged in 65,000, which is a little bit more than what they had done um, in fiscal 20 and 21, but less than the last two years. So uh, that could change also. So what is that actually cover? Abatements and exceptions to what? Uh, to your real estate and your pro and your personal property. Okay. All yep. Right. So when we come in and argue about our tax bill and they agree with us, that's where the money comes from. Exactly. Yes. If that ever happens. What's that? Like oh, that. Yeah. And then people get exemptions for different things, you know, so there's some that are automatically come off the top. Um, and I don't know what those are all for exactly either. So clause 22, clause 41. <laughs> I recognize the numbers, but I don't know what they are. Uh, okay. okay, so local receipts. Um, looking at the numbers from fiscal 22 and just looking so far into fiscal 23, um, I didn't make a lot of changes here, but I know that our rooms and meals tax has gone up significantly from the previous year. Um, that might be able to go up more if we need that, but I wouldn't want to take it too much further. Uh, motor vehicle excise is always, who knows what that will be, um, but I did bring that up a little bit as well. The rest of these, I think, are pretty tight numbers. Um, payments in lieu of taxes, here again, just not sure what if we can rely on, on certain nonprofit schools to donate. Um, given the the um, discussions of late. So um, budget are a little lower there again for fiscal 24 as we did for fiscal 23. Um, everything else is. So I, I have a, do have a question about the, um, so the room and meals tax, it looks like um, uh, it, that is that a, permanent jump, do you think, that we can expect roughly this level going forward, or is this a spike? I think it might, I, time personally, event? I think it's permanent. You know, we have Treehouse now. Okay. Um, I think there's more happening in the town of Deerfield in that regard. People are more comfortable going out in public. Okay. I, I do. COVID, I think yeah. that's permanent. Right. If yeah, you look really back at FY20, it was at 245. So 21 and 22 were Dips. Okay. Dips That's COVID, probably. COVID, COVID yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, I see. Yes, we're in, still mostly just recovering the lost. I have a question. What's that? But is the the railroad? I just, from my understanding, they don't pay taxes, but they. Oh, the railroad is no longer in there. That that contract expired last year, so you can get rid of that. The railroad is no longer. Do they pay taxes? No. Nope. They're exempt, huh? Mm -hmm. Just like the nonprofits are exempt. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't the state own it now? What? Yeah, we the do river? we do get state oh, aid sorry. for the state owned property in town. Yeah, that's in that number up to, up top. The state owned land number is 131,000 for fiscal twenty three. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the, the state now owns that real property, right? I guess I, I don't know. Not the yard, but you mean you're talking the tracks? Yeah. Okay. They own the track, but not, I think not so. the yard. I believe so. Might have some They certainly are operating. So, um, so we do pay the state through the wastewater treatment plant budget, piddly little amounts for the fact that the sewer pipes go underneath the railroad tracks. <laughs> That's and we do so we do pay the Commonwealth for that. Yeah, thirty dollars for one and and five dollars for the other. <laughs> How much does it cost in your effort? <laughs> really? <laughs> um. So I don't know if this is a good place to talk about this. So, um. In. For many, 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 many years, the districts would pay individuals here in town for 
things that they did to support the tax process for the districts. So that includes the treasurer collector, it includes the assistant treasurer collector, the assessors and the assessor's clerk. So each district pays those people individually and, and that's not uncommon and it's not illegal. It is uh, an obscure law from way back, but we're trying to make that change, which is why I didn't give you the treasurer collector salaries today. So um, I'm in contact with the other two districts. Um, I work for the South Deerfield Fire District. Yes, Is it really please. good? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I'll set them between us. <laughs> um, so we want the districts to start paying the town those stipends, and then the town will in turn put those stipends into the pay, into the line item for, the, for those individuals. The, the advantage here is that the individual will then have that money go into retirement. So it would increase their retirement monies. Um, it would have W-2 wages taken out, or excuse me, taxes taken out instead of self-employment taxes, which are way higher. Um, so for me, it's a win-win for the employee. Um, you don't want to penalize the employee either by taking it completely out of their hands. So, so it's going to be a pass through. So I will at some point in time, increase the miscellaneous non-recurring line item, and we will then increase the budgets accordingly for those numbers. I've gotten a number from South Deerfield Water and um, I have the fire district, uh, South Deerfield Fire District number. I'm just waiting for Deerfield area protection and then I can compile all those and plug them in for transparency yes yeah I, i'm not doing anything with the assessors right now i think the assessors will just leave 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 the process alone for for the assessors but you know we could in fact at some point in time bring it in to the assessors too but they don't work on a regular basis you know that's that's a stipend mm. they automatically get so we'll just leave i think leave that one alone but okay. all right um next page uh not a lot to talk about um Okay, question? Yes. Payments in lieu of taxes is down $100,000. Right. That's, um, as I mentioned a few minutes earlier, uh, we did reduce that one um, in fiscal 23 because we weren't sure what was happening with the nonprofit schools and whether they were going to continue to donate to us. So Do we, we know yet? We, we don't know. Um, one yeah. of them gave us a, a, a nice donation just the yeah. other day that we were not expecting. Right. Uh, but that might be in lieu of not doing some work for us that had okay. been planned. So right. we just don't know. Okay. Yeah. So how is stuff like work done accounted, or is it not? The like, work that that they do is not is not anywhere but in our minds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they keep track of it as an expenditure. Okay. Casey. Casey has a question. They do both donations and in kind work. They do track what the in-kind um, contribution is, and we recognize that mm -hmm. of oh, the the associated costs. So right. it's a combination of in-kind and direct payments. But would that show up on our uh, revenues or not? No, no, in kind no, won't it show up. Goes towards grant work and stuff. It, it's a. Mm, it's a paragraph or so on our town meeting warrant to recognize the additional yes. work that they do. Okay. Can we move on to the other page, the last page or the other yeah. side? Um, the receipts reserved for debt is um, from when, when we took out the garage bond so that's just an amortized amount that's going to continue until we're done with that bond. So that's that's a given number. The um, reimbursement for administrative costs, I just plugged in last year's amount because I haven't figured the new amount yet for fiscal 24. That was something I was supposed to do yesterday and today. And <laughs> <laughs> they got away from you. <laughs> I will get it done. I will. Um, the Dickinson Library Trust uh, dollar amount is correct. Uh, we wasn't a lot of interest earned in fiscal 
mm. um, 22 to to uh, to give this the uh, libraries. Um, the free cash down towards the bottom, that's the net number after we spent money uh, at the town fall town meeting, which is why I should have plugged in that 19,000 for unemployment, but one of those things that just didn't get done yet. Um, I just willy nilly threw in 250,000 that we keep aside at the end of end of the the uh, process. Mm -hmm. And that leaves us with 17,900 to spend. Um, I just did a quick and dirty this afternoon. Um, if the schools, let's just say, if all of the schools overall went up 4% and we plugged in the other things that we need in our budget, we'll be Oh, about five hundred thousand dollars short of the that 17. number right there, or over that number. Right. So, so um, there are some cuts that are going to have to be made. That's all there is to it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And well, that does not include um, capital projects. Nothing. Nothing for capital, other than I think I I kind of included the ambulance in there, our portion of the ambulance. We were looking at USDA for a grant on that, just that meeting yesterday yeah. we had that might be an opportunity to get some money. That's what I heard. So, yep. So it could be that we allocate money for the ambulance and then be, by the time we get it, right. we might have another way to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, but still about 500000 mm -hmm. Julie? Tim had his hand up. So we're not voting on anything we're just discussing anybody have any questions or anything about what we just went over would it make sense to deduct from free cash the amount we're anticipating spending on skims well that's more... no because it goes into the budget okay. so it'll it's in that number okay because <clears throat> i mean that's going to take significant bite out of this free cash net right if you look at your expense sheet on that last page you'll see three hundred and fifty-two thousand already plugged in that's for their operating budget which i think is going to increase because i've just given him given um excuse me given her so new numbers for retirement and for insurance and they were higher than what was originally budgeted in there so that will go up a little bit and that is just their operating budget. I haven't plugged anything into this schedule for the for the ambulance. Great. Any other questions or comments on that? No. Okay. On that cheering note, let's see. <laughs> um, so I'm losing it, but um, we're going oh, to do, do number six and then go back to number five. So number six on the item is requesting a letter to DLS for forecasting spreadsheet assistance. And this is why I'm really happy that the select board is meeting at the moment. So DLS, there, there you can get forecasting. There's a spreadsheet that you can get put together for forecasting that will take this year's budget and look five years out in advance. So when we make a decision this year, we can see how that changes five years out. Okay. Um, and I found the spreadsheet and I downloaded it and it is beyond complicated. <laughs> um, and I, so I was thinking, oh, we can figure this out. And I'm looking at it and it would be a huge amount of work to put it together. So I was at the MAA, MMA training thing mm -hmm. and they said they'll do it for us. Ooh. All we need is an email from the select board oh. chair saying, please do this for us. We voted it on February 15th at our select board meeting. Um, so I drafted an email for you to send that says, please do this for us and that I'll be the, the point of contact if you want me to be. For sure. Um, can you, but can I didn't you send it to Casey? Yeah. Okay. I'll send that to Casey. And do you want to um, do you want to make a motion to support that letter to Emma? 
Tim? Did you convene? Yes, yes. we did. Okay. Convene. Okay. We did. I'll make a motion to support a letter of support to DLS to give us a five-year forecast. Uh, I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Great. Great work. Thank Beautiful. you. Thank you. So out. I will um, forward that to so, KC. And that's MMA. We send it to MMA. And it they goes actually to have... DLS. Oh, DLS does. Um, okay. But yep. I have the email from the guy who said, send me an email saying to do this. Perfect. And um, he also said he'd be willing to come and present either to the select board or finance committee on DLS, Would what love they that. have. And they've done a lot they of work have. recently on their the stuff they have available. When we when we were at MMA, the two, ac the two acronyms DLS and MMA. I'm sorry. Um, MMA is Massachusetts <laughs> Municipal Association, and DLS and DLS is Division of Local, Local Services. Services. When we were at MMA, they did they had a they had a table set up and were showing all kinds of cool stuff, and I thought Julie's gonna love this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, and they did they did a whole presentation just on the the financial great. stuff, and it was great. Great. Um, so I'm thinking they actually have a lot of stuff on their website now that pre does all the financial indicator stuff. So I think we can just pull that down instead of having to make it up ourselves. Mm -hmm. So next year I'm hopeful that that will be much easier. Okay. <laughs> what spreadsheets? We knew. Yeah. It's so cool. It's yeah, so much it better. is. I knew she would like it. <laughs> when you're with Julie, you're in a house of numbers. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't know. Okay. With that, so financial indicators, um, I'm pretty sure that I went through all the comments from last time um, and incorporated them. I updated the little verbiage in here that says it, and I emailed it to everybody. So hopefully you have that. Um, I'm going to, I just did it yesterday. So I'm going to give everybody a week to process that. And next week we'll come back. And if you have any comments of anything that we missed or flubbed or whatever, um, let me know. You know just, you're not going to, we have to print our own hard copies. We can print a copy next week if you, if you want another hard, yeah, new hard copy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you could look at, look at it online, we'll make sure you have a copy when you come. Okay. And I think I sent both the PDF and the Excel. If you only have one or the other and want the other one, let me know. So um, I also went through, do you guys want to look at a um, couple things people asked, how does this compare to other towns? That do you was, want me to go through that? That was interesting. Was that was really interesting. interesting. Yes. Um, we can, do you want to go through that now? We can, I have that electronically. Everything else is laying sure. at my desk because I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to find it. Which one are you looking at? The general or the revenue? You didn't send them. Did, I think I, I thought I sent you both yes. those Excel spreadsheets, if I can. Yes. Come on. Community comparison. The community comparison stuff, yeah. I can't um, get that on my phone. Um, no, there it is. All right. So first one, we'll do revenues by source first. Shares. All right. Um, so what this is, one of the questions, um, we were talking about state aid and state aid as a percentage of our total budget. Um, and so we can, I, I, what I printed out for both of these is the entire state. So where we rank on the entire state and then where we rank within Franklin County. And then, um, you can, go through and screen all of the towns for different criteria. So I entered just a criteria of towns between 4,000 and 6,000 in population. We're at 51 something or other, 5190, something like that. Um, so if you look at, uh, sorry, I'm gonna make you seasick doing this. Um, so then you can rank. So Deerfield out of all 351 towns, um, we are number 152 out of 351. So we're 43% of the way down. Right in the middle of the pack. We're kind of right in the middle. 
at our nine point whatever percent that we get. Does that make sense? Are you with me on that? Your last. So you're going to look at the community comparison? Yeah. yeah. So so it's up here. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, if you want that. So, um, so this is the entire state um, where we rank within the entire state. So you can go through and look at every other town in the state and it gives you the town, the tax levy. So that's property taxes, state aid, local receipts, enterprise and CPA funds, other, and then total, which is just all these together. The total is in two sections. One is without enterprise and CPA funds. So this total doesn't include enterprise and CPA funds. And then, which is the number that we use on our financial indicators. And then you can do it with the enterprise and CPA funds if you want to. Um, and it gives you each of those tax levy, state aid and local receipts as a percent of the budget. Um, and then you can just do our rank within that. So we're number 152 of 351 um, towns for state aid as a percent of our budget. There's some that are wicked low. There are actually a couple towns that don't have schools at all. I don't know if Yarmouth is one of them or not, um, but it, I'm sure there's all sorts of criteria that goes in. Can you show us our line item on here? I don't know if yeah, they, I can. Too, I can um, see it really great, but I you probably can't. Uh, your field there's your field so we're at 9.3 percent and then if you look just at franklin county um we are out of 26 towns um we are sixth out of 26 towns on which which criteria you're talking about now? Right. The same one. Percent same one. So this is aid. state oh. aid. Okay, that's a that's state aid that. is a percentage of our budget excluding enterprise and CPA. That's actually more than like twelve percent. I think the nine is the um, local receipts. Oh, I've got it on the wrong line. You're right. Thank you. Oh come on. Able editing. Watch <laughs> well. It's my spreadsheet. Thank you for catching that. All right, so now we're number four. <laughs> oh, wait. That's and now you've moved over to local to see. Yeah, so wait a minute. So what, what field is column K? Hey, hey. hey is state aid. Oh, so she had it right. Can you freeze, oh, can you freeze the top row? Yeah, right? let me right. freeze so this. Percentage. You have the right one. It's the right column. It's just, we're eleven point nine two in that column, not nine point two. Oh, I just said the wrong thing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. This thing is so, in the way. Despite all our belly aching, we really can't complain too much about not getting enough state money. Most of sure, the towns in Franklin County are getting less. Don't say that too loud. <laughs> right, we can't. We, we, can. we, can we don't want them to. Well, I know we still can, and I think we still should. <laughs> well, be interesting to talk about it more in a regional way, probably. Than a... Okay, so I did have the right. <clears throat> okay. But it um, suggests to me that we should be fairly realistic about expectations to expand that very much <laughs> yeah and then if we look at the population um so the towns that have a population similar to ours oh, um nice. again we're right about this we're exactly the same place wow. six and again you're doing state yeah what tax levy as a percent of budget is another interesting, right? Because that's the burden on the tax on the taxpayer oh, on the uh, resident on the property tax. Property that's tax. the property tax, right? That be, that's an interesting one, which is over at the. If you do that for the small towns, mm -hmm. I think we're also in a very, very positive place. 18, 18 28 or so. Yeah. Um, is that the J one? Yeah. Oh, I didn't freeze panes on this one either, sir. 
Um, Baker vs. Spicy Sick. Would it be possible to do like per household tax bill? Yes. That yes. <laughs> that that, uh, yeah. that was the number I was looking at. Yeah. Okay. So then we have community comparison in general, which hopefully is opening. There it goes. Okay. And same deal. Entire state, Franklin County, and population. And what I did here, so our tax bill does not include fire. Correct. And water. So what I did was the these first three are just the straight number that's in the in the spreadsheet when you download it. And then I added the South Deerfield fire and water. Mm -hmm. um, Which are the two bigger two hours. Mm -hmm. Um so if you look at us, oh, Franklin County is easier to see. Do the others know? How do we know about the others now? Almost all of them too. There's about 10-ish towns in the entire state who don't include fire. Um, so, and I didn't, so I didn't go through each of these yeah, and check. Yeah. So it might not be exactly right. So I'm curious, those 10, are those just towns that are so small they don't have a department of their own? They don't have a department of their own or are they like- Or they could do the same thing we do and they just- um, Charge it separately. It's a separate district. Hmm. I don't. I don't know what they do. Yeah, I wonder. All right. So, anyways, <laughs> I'm distracted with that. Is this one freeze paint? No, it's not. All right. This thing. No editing. No. Oh, I can't go there. Looks like our single family tax bill is a little higher. So um, not mine. if you look at all of these, so there's if we look just in Franklin County, um, we're fourth in population. Um, we are fourth in single family tax bill. Um, we are number one in income per capita. Um, EQV, so that's essentially the, the value of the property in town um, per capita or number eight, land area, population density. So then if we take the tax bill and divide it by our income, we're number 23 out of 26. So that's, what does that that's mean? a bad, right? No, that's a good thing. That's so that means tax bill that our yeah. tax bill, our tax bill as, as a percent, we are 23, 23rd highest. So we're way down towards way, the bottom. Yeah. We don't have a huge in tax, our tax bill, bill compared to our average. For the income. Mm -hmm. Compared yeah. to our average. Yeah. So average these are, income. I mean, these are averages. So that, it's average tax income. bill and average income. It doesn't mean. That's, that's a, a ranking. We don't know. 88% are at above us. Your number 23. Okay, okay. Wait, have you added something to that or is that? Uh, no, this is just our straight bill. So if we look at it with yeah. the fire is included. Sign bill over, over income, we are on the lower end. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because exactly. Our because our income right. is so high. Right. Um, if we look at the small towns, the 4,000 to 6,000, yeah. um, we're number four again. Oh. Um, so in that, in, what? Aren't the number of our higher earning citizens living in non tax property? So, this number Yes, I know what it does. Come on, please. There it goes. So, my understanding is that Carolyn meets with DLS every year and they go through the incomes mm -hmm. and they any any income that's in the houses that are in Waitley but have a Deerfield address are excluded mm -hmm. and any income that is on in the 01342 
that is associated with a house that is a nonprofit is excluded. Okay. Huh. For tax for for the school, yeah, so for the yeah, so we're real to get a waiver. The real taxpayer. We are, yeah, and that's manually done every year because we go and ask them to do that. And she's about ready to retire. Yeah, <laughs> somebody needs to take up that mantle. Yes, yeah. but and actually, if you, I was wondering about this because if you look at last year's financial indicators, the first year on there, twenty eleven, if you look at the the income per capita from 2011 to 2012, it drops. Like uh, that was it. it. Yeah. And I think that must be the year that she started that. I'm just, I'm making this up now, but right. I'm guessing that that's the year that she started doing that. I thought that was more recent. 2012, it was more recent. But yeah. I thought I, was it? we were just talking about this. Like yeah, that or somebody. Ago. Something else. Know. Yeah. Someone yeah, like, moved out of town. Out of town. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> something like that. I don't know. So how does the row in you know, is that because they include, that's not residences, right? In row for what? equalized value is like a million two hundred and twenty. Row has, the um, Yankee, the, they have the Yankee whatever, so. But how does that affect, that's not excluded into, I guess it it's a value right in town, right? For yeah, property, but that's not income. What is the income? Like, Their income is it's 26. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Dan Irving has another high one as well. Because they have the, the row. Oh, yeah. right. Pumping thing. Yep. Oh, oh, no. Row. <laughs> R O W E. <laughs> okay. Um, so if we look at the entire state, um, Let's see, we're 250th in population, 156th in single family tax bill. There's a um, 156th. Out of 351. With it. So the, the higher that number, the worse, the higher the tax bill. Right. right. Compared to others. Right. So about 200 communities are higher than us. Right. So 155 communities are higher than us. So the lower the number, the higher the tax. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, right. Don't no, we have 350? Would have the number highest one tax has rate. the highest tax rate. Right. That's yeah. That's the percentile down below it. So this percent, so 156 is, oh. fifth, is 44% of 351. Oh. Right. So 195 have higher. So we're in the middle of the town. No, 155 towns have higher tax rates than we do. Per if there's 351 yeah. and yep. you take away 150, that's 200. Yep, the 200 have lower than we do. 100 have lower. Have higher so, than we do. so, okay, good. Number one is the highest. Number one has the highest. Okay. And we're number 156. And then if we go over to tax bill divided by income, we're 223. It, it, yeah, it is. So again, it's it's averages. So I, yeah. But what else can you use, I guess? Then right. you know. Can you scroll up to Wellesley? I'm just curious. Those um The one you're talking about is well, the 156. That's a single family tax bill. So that's just a gross number. Yeah, it's not. No, there it is. Where is There it is. Sorry. Yeah, that's just 2%. Wow. Yeah, per, per capita income. Yeah. Is what, 211. Right. Town. Well, look at the show. Okay. All right. <laughs> Very interesting. We'll also see a bunch of tape that are skewed, I think. Yeah. Because the burden that all the second homeowners paying taxes, but the residents don't have to. So they all sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how that's reflected on here. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, they're paying property tax. They're paying the property tax of where they put the income. Yeah. Yeah. Of where they put the income for this calculation. And that's true. So they have the income twice. 
I think the income must be on whatever yeah. town their residence yeah. is. Right. It's okay. So that's where the income goes, but do they still have the tax bill in the second line? No, I'm saying when you're looking at sort of the burden of the taxpayer versus the budget of the town, for instance, you'll see some of those towns are look like they're in a really good place. It's like all the money going around the second moment. But it's still a tax bill. So are they excluded right. non resident Yeah, actually, it might, be, it might be bad because they would be. No, because they include the property tax. They right. take those residents out. If they're, not, if they're not paying their taxes on that residence. Right. Yeah, so their so average they, tax bill divided by their average right. income is going to be. Can we infinite, infinite. What's that? What's really not. Done? We were going to do the miscellaneous yeah. budgets. No, you can have a bunch of people making they have so many people or getting taxed. Oh, right, right, right. Like, right. Okay. What would those be? Right. I mean, but the income's low too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. really fun. It's, it's very fun. interesting. It's interesting, so, yeah. Yeah. And um, figure out which stats are yeah. So I emailed those to everybody. We can do that on pretty much any statistic. Uh, that the state has. So if there's other ones that we're interested in or that we think would be useful to, for people to see, um, there's that. And I emailed you the link to the website so you can look at it and do whatever you want. The mm -hmm. other thing I did was I wrote up a quick summary, executive summary of the financial indicators, um, one less than one page, um, which I can make copies of it and hand out to you. But that also, I'm going to, let it percolate for a week and we will um, see next week if you think I told the truth. Um, one thing that I added um, is the last comment here. So we looked at personnel costs and we judged them favorable. Um, and the data that we had ended at the end of 2022. And in 2023, we did a lot that increased personnel costs. We hired some new people. We increased salaries right and left. Um, and so, in my opinion, even though we judge that as favorable, it's still, I, I put it still as an area of concern that warrants attention. Um, so you guys think about that and see if you agree with me and we'll talk about it next week. Um, but that, so that, that's getting close. And then that will, I think, form the basis of the report that Finance Committee puts into the, the annual report that gets handed out. And then we'll do the same thing that we did last year. After we go through the whole budget, we'll do a summary thing of the budget. Then that will go in the handout that people get at town meeting. All right. Question? Go for it. And this data, can we include the um, how much room we have left to borrow? Yeah. And I, it's good. not here, is it? No. 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 I didn't print that. The borrowing, the borrowing the, like comparing to other towns and seeing where they are. I no, it's just us. Like, what do we have? What do, you mean? what do we have available? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Versus it, it, oh it's library data for Um well, all that. Is it still huge? No, no, because you did a debt so, analysis. Oh, you <laughs> yeah. mean the um against the not the levy limit. No, the debt, the debt limit. Borrowing, limit. Talking the borrowing. Borrowing limit. It's still huge because the um, it's essentially forty million minus fifteen, so twenty five million that we can still borrow. Okay. Um, the the wastewater treatment plant is not included in that limit. That comes out of it's some, it's but what's a different the, some category. senior housing maybe, yeah. senior center maybe. We do the campus, but we still should be okay, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, we just won't be able to pay the debt but down, yeah. but whatever. So, um, <laughs> okay, if we're up, I mean, if we got plenty of room to come for us. I'm gonna make work. I'm gonna take you down home. We will determine many things happen. I think. Really, no loss. Peace ourselves. Mm. <laughs> nice indoor tennis court. Pickleball, pickleball, <laughs> rec center. Pickleball, yeah, pickleball. yeah. Pickleball. yeah. Pickleball. yeah. Sure. It's yep. so fun. You gotta try it. Yeah, I, I got it. Okay, um, schedule planning for upcoming budget review meetings. Um, so what I was thinking here, if you look, do you guys have a copy of the agenda? No. No, um, I did not print one. To, um, right here. That's what we kind of planned. Okay. Am I still sharing? I'm not still sharing. Okay. 
I know what tab should I put the mm -hmm. OPEB funding handout in? 12. Well, thank you. So this one will All be right. better or more important to anyone. Mm -hmm. Resets, right? I think it's suggested. <laughs> Super organized. That's yeah. better. Yeah. All right. That's on the schedule. So here's my thought. Here's the upcoming schedule. Next week is town clerk and DPW, February 20. Well, you can read. Um, it's all laid out there in front of us. The March 7th and March 9th meetings. Those are the meetings that the schools are supposed to be presenting the budgets and school committees are supposed to be voting on the budgets. Um, and so we've been invited to, we're going to post a meeting that same night. We can go to that meeting. We can discuss with them. Um, that is the opportunity. That is pretty much the only opportunity that we will have to ask our questions of the school administration. Um, and I'm out of town that weekend. So I'm going to try and call in. But if you guys like. I'm out of, I'm out of town that night. Before. Uh, that's the one I'm I mean, yeah, I'm that's the one you know that. Um, and I could, so if anybody wants to like forward me questions yeah and i don't know if there's going to be a remote login to that yes, meeting yes. um if there is i will try hard to um, attend the seventh and the ninth seventh and the ninth all right yeah okay. i will make sure Julie? yeah tim has his hand up oh go ahead tim. um just a quick question for brenda um well two actually um the the five hundred thousand that we're projected being over budget um, does that include sort of level funding for what the schools were last year because their budgets are not there? No, I just, I quickly just figured a overall 4% increase. Okay. Who knows what they'll really be, but I was being um, not conservative, but uh, what's the word? Pessimistic. Maybe realistic. <laughs> no, that's good. And the second question is, is there is there an easy way, or maybe this is a silly question, is there an easy way within the budgets when we go to look at them to indicate things that you can't cut? So for instance, the payroll for the assessors or the payroll for the administrator's office, those are, those are set. We can't cut somebody's wages. So that would make it easier to figure out quickly, oh, these are the things we have to cut from. And mm. I don't know if that's helpful or if it's silly or anyway, it's just a question. You could do what you like. You the retirement is insurance, like those kind of things you could maybe highlight. And then you can cut, you know, like you can cut positions if you had to, but right. But certain things right. you can't, like the retirement and all that stuff, maybe highlight it somehow. But yeah, I, let me think about that one, Tim. Yeah, thanks. I think sort of the question is like discretionary versus non discretionary spending, right. like we talk about. Yeah, in exactly. But the problem is that most cuts are going to be personnel cuts. Yep. If there are cuts to a budget. Right. Except when we're talking capital, big, big project things. Right. There's not any capital in that. No. no I think we're, I mean, we're totally dependent on what the schools come out with. And we always have been. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So the question for this part of the thing is looking, especially looking at the first couple of meetings, are there any specific questions that we would like to pass to any of these people who are coming before they come so they can be prepared to answer them? We're obviously can ask whatever we want during the meeting, but if there's anything that we would like them to bring data on or anything. Well, one thing that might be helpful for everybody is to not get a copy of their proposed budget that night. Mm -hmm. So in other words, generally, I think those they would have gotten a copy of their proposal ahead of time with the school committees. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any way that you can also ask the, the finance committee and select board to get a copy of that. when Specifically from the schools, because well, most of these right. other ones we have in our budget exactly. book. But right. it just means so that you don't go on March 7th, you don't show up, and all of a sudden you're looking at that budget for the first time. Cold, yeah. It's not helpful. Really, to be efficient. So that would just yeah. be one. I don't know who interfaces with the schools about that, but I, I think um, they're working on their budget. Yeah, I think we were kind of warned that we weren't going to get them very early this year. So yeah. um, I don't know that anybody's asked. Yeah. Well, even they, I think, because they generally so email to the committee members who are voting. Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead, Casey. The town administrators were warned that the school budgets were going to come in late because the governor's budget comes in late. And anytime you have a new governor, you can ask for relief. They That person can ask for relief to turn their budget in later so they have time to evaluate the situation. That's why the school budget's going to come. It's going to be harder to parse the school budget in terms of the entire budget because we won't have all the information. So the um, the frontier budget, there's some law that since they're joint, they have to provide the budget 45 days before the first town meeting, which is our town meeting. Um, so that is their push to that date for frontier, but there's no, Deerfield Elementary doesn't have that same restriction, does it, or does it? They generally do it the same time or right yeah. around the same time. And okay. then Smith Folk, the cutoff for Smith Folk is April 1st. Um, I did send an email out to Linda Kelly to ask her at Smith Folk, who's the woman I've talked to before, um, to see if she has the tuition number. But my guess is they're going to be stuck in the same situation because the governor's budget is going to be late. Hmm. We did. We added. We added another child midway through the year, didn't we? And then he, and then he or she. Uh, uh, Quit. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, they moved to another town. I see. Even if it's a couple of days in advance, if we yeah. could just get that budget in advance, that would help. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Who, <laughs> who's going to ask them? I, I can reach out to Darius and Shelley. Trevor sure. knows him. I'll check That'd be great. See. Thanks, Trevor. Maybe. You may say pound sand, but <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if, but in a joint meeting, whatever they send to their committee members, yes, same just, timing. just I, same they time. Typically, send will us, I, yeah. I know that they will send it on to us. Okay. Too. I can ask him too, Trevor, if it makes yeah, it for easier. Sure. Okay. Yep. I know they they were struggling with a really high number at, for at least for Deerfield Elementary, I believe, with a high number, and then they looked at a couple of positions and different. I know that there's talk about trying to whittle that thing down as much as they can, but maybe close to that four, but I think we're lucky. But I'll try to get more info. They increased less than that in the past. They have, they they have they've yeah. done pretty well. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. had a lot of S, S money and yeah. different ways, but this year, not so much. And I think our enrollment to Deerfield's enrollment, like it's one of our lucky years, yeah. if I remember right. Meaning like- This is? As percentage of- Budget, right? Isn't it? Meaning we're going to get more state aid? Or you mean no, 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 no. Maybe we... like uh, with the frontier budget, like our not oh, oh, yeah. higher versus yeah. Waitley or Sunderland oh, or something that like that. That spread. Here, right? Oh, that'd so, be nice if we had that little benefit for fiscal 24. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not oh, counting on because well. because I'm like sure Franklin Tech will, will go up right. more. Yes. Yep. And I'm thinking not not just schools, like do we have police questions or assessors right. questions? I have a couple that I wrote down for assessors already, right? Yes. Which is um, yes. overlay and projected new growth. Any other questions for any of these other folks? Um, do we finance the cruisers or like the ambulance I heard someone talking about buying? Do we finance those or are people looking to just buy them? The out? cruisers? Sorry? You say the cruisers? Yeah. What usually there's one cruiser that's purchased each year, and that's and that's in the budget. No, I saw it's not I, they're not financed. No, but they're not financed. No. Oh, I see. It's no. just a one-time no. purchase, it's like a big chunk. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but we buy one every year. And the ambulance, they same thing, but they save up. They put money aside every year. Okay. So um, and in theory, you put enough aside every year that when you go to buy the ambulance, you have enough in your reserves. But the ambulance price, yeah, went way up. And, uh, wait time. Maybe we could get a used one. Hmm. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I think the last ambulance we purchased was two hundred and forty-three thousand, something like that. And now they're talking three hundred and seventy-five. But you're saying there's a capital account that they're just putting money into, participating the purchase. It's kind of retained earnings. They kind of hold it aside because it's an enterprise fund. The the trouble is, is this year they also have to buy some cardiac monitors, and so that's taken some of the um, retained earnings. So there isn't enough to cover the ambulance. So they're going to ask each town to put in to the ambulance. No. 
Police and skims both. I think we should ask them about call volume mm -hmm. um, and how that's changed over years. And yeah. then staffing, like how they man the staff, the different shifts. Yeah, yeah police is getting tough. And I know Chief is working on trying to figure that out with the law change. Right. Yep. What law change? The with the Police Reform Act, um, no, no. Well, I think we're by twenty twenty five or next year. We're not allowed to have part time officers really anymore because everybody has to be fully uh, accredited. Everyone has to go through a full time academy before they can be, be unless they're retired, right? Yes, and before you right. could kind of do part time. Retired police could come and do stuff, and but that's and all. And they had a lower, like you could have part time people that had a lower level of training, and exactly. they've done away with that. So you can still have part time people, but they have the full up training. So as soon as a full time job comes up in some other town, they're going to go for that. Yep. Or state police or whatever. Right. Kind of... I guess people who, yeah, like former police professionals could could do the part, could be part time. Yeah. Job, yeah. And they have a number of retired many, officers who. Yeah don't, you know, don't want to work full-time anymore, but are still right. Okay. Any other thoughts while we're looking at this list? No. Um, so we can do, it's 10 after seven. What'd we start? 5.30. So mm -hmm. you want to do like 20 minutes worth of miscellaneous budgets and then yes. call it quits. Yes. Well, you handed out the wage schedule. Is that because, oh, yeah, yeah. Is that because it changed that. or is that no, no, just? No, no, let's talk about that. We did mean to talk about that. The class comp. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't take the topic. Friend has mentioned it a couple of times in passing already this evening, but yeah, maybe. Um, so this is the the class comp that was approved by the select board and the personnel board. Um, that included a three percent cola in addition to the steps and the steps are at two and a half percent. So basically that was a five and a half percent raise for, for most people. Um, this class comp schedule is going to change. Casey and I were talking about that today. There are a couple of um, changes that need to be made based on what we have in the budget and based on um, the decision for the um, senior center to increase uh, one of the employees um, pay to be uh, closer to full-time and um, be a supervisor. So I think that's going to change the grade and step that that person is currently on. So, uh, so there are some additional changes that are going to happen between now and the time that this budget is approved, but this is what has been approved so far. Does that change the class comp schedule or does that just change what well, there will, step there will be, will. Um, go ahead, Casey, you want to talk? It will. Um, we've included at the request of the planning board, we've included a planning slash community development coordinator position. We're still working in the more title positions. out. Okay. That'll be within the select board salaries, but it is in place. And the outreach coordinators responsibility changed. So they're going to go from a B to a C, grade B to grade C. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? I haven't had a chance to think about it yet. So all of the, this is just, what we have right now is just exactly what it was last year plus a 3% COLA, and right. then people stepped up one. Almost everybody stepped up one. Mm -hmm. Got it. And this this was approved by the town meeting? No. Last year? This was, this was approved in December by the personnel board, and I'm not sure when the select board approved it, but... Too long ago, either. And we, yeah. The, the, I, the previous, it, so last year's was approved at town meeting when mm -hmm. because the whole thing was completely changed. Right. Right, right. And so, so this one just incorporates a 3% COLA into each step. 
Yeah, plus, that's, plus that's two, all it does. Plus two and a half percent. Well, the two and a half is the, yes. was our yeah, difference that's, that's between that's, each that's right. that's built in. in there. Yeah. Is this what's used? Are these rates what Correct. used in this budget? Correct. Yep. For once, I had the numbers when I needed them. Yes. Yeah. That's part of it. We <laughs> had to get them early. But it's so, going to be changed again. Huh? It's going to be changed. It's going to be changed for two people. Oh, okay. For two positions, John. Yeah, just two positions. So, it, yeah, a new position and uh, a revised position. It yep. won't change the pay rates. It will change where people are placed in each grade. And these rates are by our hour, correct? By hour. Yeah. Hour. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. These are hours, not thousands. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on this? Would be, yeah. Thank you for it mentioning would be useful that. Useful if we could. Like which ones are part time and which ones are full time? You see it in here, though. Generally, a, the A are part timers, okay. um, or under twenty hours, right, Casey? I didn't hear what Jim said. Uh, he was wondering where the part timers fit on this. Depends on the position. There are some positions that are not placed because the bylaw doesn't require it. Could be a temporary position, could be a part-time position that we haven't classified. Most positions are classified, however. Oh, okay. So for, uh, for instance, of one that is not on this comp plan would be the nurse mm -hmm. or- um, Lifeguards. The, the building inspectors, the assistant building inspectors. Okay. Miscellaneous budgets? Sure. I've lost my piece of paper. Okay. Where should we start? Um, you have the list, but I know which one is the beginning. So should we do the moderator at 114 5100? Yep. We make a motion. Of, are we proposing or accepting? Or recommend. I make a motion. We recommend the moderator expense count 114 5100 for $400. A second. Second. All right. It's a bargain. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I did. Huh? Any discussion? Good. Huh? It's been seconded. Do we have any discussion? Oh, discussion. I thought you said no level funding. No. Nope. All right. All those in favor? That's unanimous, four, zero, zero. Next. Okay, select board salaries. Here, get, oh, go ahead. Do we have a motion? Make a motion or propose. Select board salaries, 122, count 122, 5100 for $16,000. Second that. Okay. Jennifer raised his name. Yeah. <laughs> Any discussion? No, nope. all those in favor? You know, names, four, zero, zero, if I could say that word. Next. Um, the next one is finance, finance committee, 131-5400. Also a bargain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen any of the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is for to pay for training. So if we want, I went to the finance, yeah. whatever, I went to some meeting, I don't know, mm -hmm. that I had to pay for that they paid for. Okay. Make a motion to accept for the proposed finance committee budget of $500 account 131.5400. Okay. All right, any discussion? No, all those in favor? That's unanimous, next. Accountant salary, 135, 5110. Sure. Which one? Do you want to do that one? Yeah. Which one? Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear 135, 5110. Oh, no, go ahead. No, you're fine. So um, this is according to contract. 
the only thing that I added for fiscal 24 was a part-time person to help with warrants and other miscellaneous things because I'm not keeping up. This town is doing too much. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so um just threw in 520 hours um there is somebody i had in mind uh to take this position she's supposed to retire from the police department on june 30th <laughs> <She's there. laughs> and she actually makes more than that right now but um not sure i need 520 hours so <laughs> Hey, you wouldn't have to train. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Do we have a motion? I move that we recommend the uh, uh, sum of uh, ninety-five thousand three hundred ninety-eight for town accountants. Mm -hmm. Now, jump the gun. Second that. Sorry, I started the discussion before you did that. I. That's fine. <laughs> So I agree that the town does too much and asks too much. And I think that we have, um, I really think we had to look at grants. There's an awful lot of grants out there. Not to get more grants. I think we need to look at the grants that we are asking for through the lens of, is this the, the burden that it's going to put on the people in our town? Bingo. Um, because I, I don't know if that's the only area. I think there's also like... Um, uh, what do you call it when people call up once that FOIA requests and that kind mm -hmm. of thing? I don't know how much that you do. Oh, the number, the but... number of special revenue funds that I've added in the last year and a half is just unbelievable. You know, for various things, various little grants or various donation accounts or various you name it. Um, there's so yeah. every time we vote something, are you saying like every time we vote something in in um, annual meeting that is another project mm -hmm. the money comes out and goes into a special account and has to be dealt with a special fund so i have to set up a whole fund of account numbers for that particular project like the library i just set up part of the library here so we could collect the money <laughs> mm -hmm. um but i um even anytime anybody gets a little grant for something like jennifer remillard is doing a tremendous amount of grants but i've had to add four or five different funds for her in the last year because she's she's doing this but it's great it's it's great it's helping her out but there's there's the back, yeah. work involved with every one of those things that we have done um, and that administrative work takes away from some of the daily tasks right. that many of us do and brenda is a key part of that because she tracks the money so having a data entry clerk will get, uh, relieve some of that pressure so that she can do that higher end work. Yes. You know, think about the bonds, the, the bands that we're taking out and the bonds that we have to do and uh, meeting with Moody's and filling out their paperwork and just, you know, the various other things that we had never did, had to do in the past or right. somebody else did it. So there's a lot of work involved with some of these bigger projects, especially if they involve grants through the federal government and the management tasks that especially Trevor and Brenda do. And I do too, but not as much. Um, those are the things that are key for us to make sure that we're meeting the expectations and reporting, but also gives us access to the funds that we've agreed to with USDA, for instance. So, I mean, Brenda, it seems like you're like the key kind of hub and cog here. So are you? I oh, mean, she is. Well, but yeah, but yeah, but the money, yeah, of course. Okay, you're not saying anyway, but you're. But there's something about the the, the organized manner of our finances, which yes. is absolutely critical, and you do a fabulous job, as far as I can tell. Yes. Um, well, I'm. So the real question fine. is: Are you asking for what you want? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I because think that's, that's, you should feel free to always ask for and demand what you think we need to make your job easier. She hasn't up until now, David. She yeah. actually needs it. It's more 
less of a want, more of a need based on the no, no, activity in town, yeah. the project activity. Yeah. No, I, I'm saying there is a need, but I'm saying at the same time, I think we this should, I mean, just encouraging publicly, Brenda, for you to make sure that you have what you need, because yeah. I don't think there's anybody in any position of authority or board or, you know, who's not going to be amenable to making sure that you have what you need to make your office run as smooth right. as possible. And, and I, you know, quite frankly, I'm tired of telling people I'm sorry for not getting to something. <laughs> I know, I, know right. I do that to you a lot lately. And I, and I, and I'm, I'm it's just too much. Work. It's discouraging because I'm not like that. I'm, I'm very efficient. I think I'm very um, uh, on top of things most of the time. And over this last six months, I have just fallen apart. Um, part of that is taking on more duties to help the treasurer collector. You know, Sarah right. is learning her okay. position. Yeah. And there's a lot that her and I go over even on a daily basis to, to um, make things a little smoother. Financial and, coordination is the key yeah. connection between those two jobs. Yeah. Um, and Brenda, and they really have started to facilitate that in a much tighter team. So, but that takes time. Mm -hmm. it, it does. And, and yet I know I'm only working 32 hours a week but it doesn't pay to increase my hours because a lot of this work could be done by somebody at a lot less right. pay than, than I'm getting. Exactly. So it, this would be part-time non-benefited. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you explain the, um, <clears throat> this office, like the yeah. different positions? So there's a town clerk, mm -hmm. there's a town treasurer, there's a town accountant, yeah. and then there's an assistant, as an assistant clerk. Assistant town clerk, clerk and an assistant treasurer collector because we decoupled town clerk from the other two financial functions. Right. So you right. have a town clerk and an assistant town clerk now. Right. And you're going to have, you have a treasurer collector and, and we're getting, uh, we're, we put the, the ad out to get an assistant treasurer collector. So it's treasurer and collector. There's two positions there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it used to be that that office was one head person with all three, with all jobs, all three jobs, and she had two assistants. So we basically added one so additional. Now it will be, right. One additional. And we voted that last year. Yes. yes. Right. To do that separation. Correct. Right. Yeah. And, and when we get to the town clerk's salary, you'll see that that isn't budgeted right now as a full-time position. It's budgeted for 25 hours right. a week. Whether that's right, whether it's wrong. I know Carlene is spending a lot more time on that right now, but she's developing policies and procedures um, to, to, to make that um, department run more efficiently and and to be able to continue with the decoupling of the of the positions because that was the goal was to was to set the town clerk um, apart from the treasurer collector yeah um is there a seasonal component to i mean you you're talking about the workload and you know um is it greater or lesser at some certain times a year used to be yeah really i i have i have maybe two months now that i'm down and it's it's usually um <laughs> from mid september to mid october <laughs> yeah and then mid december to mid january that's about it yeah but usually she's helping us prepare for town meetings as well because we have a regular town meeting in the fall now we just haven't set a specific date i mean it's it's been routine and so all of that takes also takes up time but the because office it's special projects, the office definitely can be seasonal depending on like her job, not so much. It's constant, but because she affects every department, but um, election gets crazy. And then you have the tax bill and sewer bill stuff. I was wondering if an assistant might be better thought of as a seasonal position rather than a. Uh, well, the, the warrant is, it has to be done every two weeks. And that warrant generally includes 200 to 300 invoices that I have to look at. It was that packet so, I had here earlier. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's one of the processes that I was hoping to have an assistant to help with was processing all of the bills that we get. Um, so are you hoping for the general 10 hours a week as opposed to as needed? Right. Yeah. And and whether that we use 10 hours a week, I'm I'm envisioning probably closer to eight hours a week, but I budgeted for 10 yeah. just just in case. Yes. Just look at a procedure. Has the comp um 
board approve the position? Do they need to? Personnel board. Personnel board. <clears throat> it's a part-time position. No, I don't know that we would even incorporate it into the classification plan unless it grows. How about the select board? This it, the, the, the select board's listening right now. Have they voted it? No. No. We're still going through the evaluation process. This is the first time that Brenda's pre presented this. We've okay. discussed it for a while. Everybody's seeing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've discussed it. Uh, yeah. Trevor and I and Casey and I, but yeah, but Ooh, Tim's got his hand oh, up. Oh, go ahead, Tim. I was just going to say um, when I think it was two meetings ago, Brenda mentioned that she, I, I was encouraging her. I asked her if you need more help in your office, because we don't want to lose you. Um, and she volunteered that, well, th now I'm actually asking for part-time help. And I was very pleased with that because I think it's important to she plays such an important role that she, you know, she needs to have help in order to keep sanity. I think it's not a good only thing. that, <laughs> you know, not only that, but the data entry function, right, is is completely um, below. What it, it gets to the evaluation function, which, you know, no matter whether we call um, Brenda an accountant or not, the audit function, which is truly the review function, is what she takes a great deal of time doing so that we're accurate and so that when the auditors do come in and review our books we have followed the rules and that really that evaluation process is very important so if she doesn't have to physically enter those bills she has more time to do some of this higher level work which certainly includes working with the treasurer on these loans because it, it takes a team to get this done mm -hmm. Uh, so are you planning to oh, take it to the personnel board? Uh, Does anybody? I don't think we are. No, we we, it, well, here. this is the thing. In the personnel bylaw, mm -hmm. um, temporary or part-time positions at this sort of level, which has been past president, don't necessarily do that. I mean, I can tell them, mm -hmm. um, but it's an administrative data entry position. We already have a job description for it. Okay, so yeah. you don't need a, um, you don't need them to approve a, what do you call it, a position description no. or no. whatever. We have an administrative assistant okay. position that fit, that can fit that mold. Okay. Okay. We can, um, we can vote this. We can withdraw it until the select board considers it, and then revisit it after that. Um, Why would we not? Can we vote it subject to? Condition the plan of the select board approving it. It doesn't matter, really. We're voting. We, and we're going to look at all of this stuff at the end anyway. We should be voting. We should be voting irrespective of what the select board does. Right. Yeah. So we Whatever would typically, if it had to go to personnel board, we would typically not vote it until personnel board right. reviewed right. it and done it. So since it doesn't have to go to personnel board, um, is that right, Nick? I is think we're okay yep. to vote it. You're right. Um, then we can. We can go ahead and vote if we want to. Yeah. Are we good? So. Yeah, we're good? Yeah. We're good. Okay. Um, I think 10 okay. hours a week, by the way, is not a whole lot to ask okay. for. Yeah. But no. It's not that much. Really, it's not that many hours. Right. All right. But yet enough, it'll enough that critical. it'll make a That'll, huge yeah. I think it'll make a and huge difference. And that stuff that's just very, right. yes, exactly. very gross. Even, even just collating these budget books, I did all of that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you should and, be, and yet you I should be doing to. that stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. I agree. Um, yep. Any further discussion? No. So just, I do. Okay. So it has been moved and seconded for number 135, 5110 accountant salary at $95,398. Any last minute discussion? No. All those in favor? All those opposed? Abstaining? Passes 301. We are at two hours. Make um, a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? All righty, we're done. Make, make a motion to adjourn the select board. Great, just in time. My husband says we I'll second that. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Thank you all very much.